The swish of the wings of time, going farther and farther away, whispers to us from the Kiwas. Helmer Selen. Hi, everybody. This is Julie again. Welcome back to the Sauna Trail podcast. Join us in our adventures as we share the story of how our family discovered the world of Finnish sauna. Before we jump into today's episode, we'll give you a recap of our journey so far. Our sauna trail started in April of 2015, where Christopher and I used an electric sauna in Madison, Wisconsin. After sitting in the sauna for a while, we braced ourselves for the cold night air. But instead of freezing our butts off like we expected, we felt invigorated and the crisp air was just a lovely reprieve from the heat. Then down the rabbit hole, Christopher went because that's what he does. After learning that the word sauna comes from Finland and there are wood-burning saunas, we knew we wanted to experience it. You can hear more about how little we knew about saunas in episode two a fateful search. Our marriage was struggling at the time, so Christopher and I decided to do a weekend getaway while exploring this wood-burning sauna thing that had piqued our curiosity. Christopher found a vacation rental in northern Wisconsin. We found some great smoked fish, played tons of cribbage, and learned that heating a wood stove requires more finesse than we had. Check out episode three, Getting Naked, to see photos of that sauna and learn how sauna affected our marriage. So Christopher, at his core, is an evangelist. So naturally, he coerced his brother and dad to try a sauna in southwest Wisconsin. That rustic wood-burning sauna is featured in episode four, Kinda Rustic. Head over to our YouTube channel, The Sauna Trail, to hear more about Christopher's first cold plunge experience with his dad and brother. At this time, Christopher and I discussed wanting to have our own sauna in our yard, but we lived on a corner lot with a very small side yard. I could see my neighbor watching TV without a shirt on while I was doing the dishes in the kitchen. (laughs) If we wanted a sauna, we had to travel to use one, but in between trips, Christopher was furiously looking into the history of sauna. And that leads us to episode five, What happened where we share the deep roots of sauna in Finland and how it has evolved in the United States. For our next sauna adventure, Christopher's mission was to find a vacation spot that could sleep our kids because they hadn't experienced it yet and also our extended families. Christopher's brother joined again along with his wife and their two kids. My mom and grandma were also brave enough to go with us to Superior National Forest located in northern Minnesota. If you haven't listened to episode six, Generations, I encourage you to check it out and hear about our first log sauna and also what was so special about that trip for our family. Now, Christopher, at this time, again, is still zealously researching the vast world of Finnish sauna. And I remember one day he was mulling over where the highest concentration of Finnish people were in North America. So down another rabbit hole he goes and introduces me to this place north of Wisconsin called the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And all of this brings us here today at this point which is part one of a two-part series. This episode marks a few firsts. Our first sauna together as a family, the first experience of going in a lake between sauna rounds, and first time in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We also love to try new foods and especially like to try foods that are unique or specialties in an area. So in Christopher's research, he came upon a food item called pasty. So naturally, we had to find the best pasty in the UP. So here we are together, all six of us. How are you guys all doing today? Snowy, cold. Fine, I'm doing perfectly fine. (laughs) 
Yeah, pretty good. Busy with all podcast and school stuff. Purple. (laughs) So, Christopher, you introduced me to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So tell us a little bit more about how that came about. Well, to understand anything well, it's always a good idea to go back into its history, find out where it came from, whether that's words and looking up the etymology or the root of those words, or it's some sort of food and you go back in the history of that food. In this case, for sauna, I'd learned that it was from the Finns and that we had some in the United States. So it was my kind of my next logical question of where are those fins? Where are the most number of those fins? Because wherever those fins are, <laughs> we're probably going to find good saunas or more saunas to be able to use. Even though we live in Minnesota, we live in southeast Minnesota, which I jokingly called northern Iowa, and there's not many saunas around here. Not at all. Mm-mm. So I looked and found that the Upper Peninsula of Michigan had a large amount of fins. And then especially in these few areas, as you can see on this map, there's a, like a high concentration of fins. Um, in some of these townships, up to half of the people are Finnish descended. So th- that then I knew where our next place would be to go to find more sauna experiences. At this point, we knew we really enjoyed sauna, yet we're at home, not able to have our own. So if we wanted to use one, we had to let go somewhere. And we also knew that we had tons to learn about sauna. And we like to travel anyway, so it was fun. Yeah, and when we travel, we like to go to a place and kind of experience it for what it is, not just do the touristy things, but to kind of dig below the surface to find out you know, what they're known for and see if we can experience different variations of that. So in the case up in the UP, it was pasties. It doesn't take much of a Google search to find out that they love pasties. And so I I decided that on this trip, we're going to try as many pasties as we could and see which one we like best or even if we like them at all. It was kind of at the end of the season we were going um, in November And not all the places were still open, but we were able to find a few places that had saunas. And in fact, there were some places that we found while I was doing my research that we would go on to use later. So we'll get to those some of those later. But on this trip up to the UP, we used two saunas. We found two places that we could stay that had saunas, and they were also right on the lake. Um, one on Lake Michigan and the other on Lake Superior. And then we also got a chance to check off one of my sauna bucket list items, which we'll talk about later. I had a coworker when I worked at my previous job who had talked about that she was Finnish descended, Finnish and Swedish, if I remember correctly. And back then I didn't know anything about sauna, and so I didn't mm-hmm. make any connections But she'd always talk about where she came from, which was Ironwood, Michigan. And um, and so once we got into sauna, I reached out and I emailed her. I said, hey, Sue, you said that you're Finnish descended and that you came from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. What do we need to do up there? And so she recommended a few things. Um, She recommended visiting McLean State Park, uh, going to Copper Harbor, eating some pasties, which we were planning to do, checking out a restaurant called The Ambassador, Nutini's Pizza Place, and to possibly take a tour of the mine. And so we've done some of those. We'll talk about those. But even to this day, we still haven't done all those things. Um, But we were thankful for the recommendations. And then on the way there, I also had another connection to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, even though I'd never been there. I had a college professor, my favorite teacher of all time, um, Sidney Giovanco, and he taught Spanish at Northwestern College, and he always told me how he wanted to retire to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. 
And uh, he, would, he would just <laughs> always talk about that. So we tracked them down, and they he had retired and moved up there to Escanaba, and we stopped to see them on the way up to the Upper Peninsula. So do you guys remember visiting with the Givancos? I was only five years old, so I don't remember this. But we bought a pasty on our way out of Escanaba. Dr. Giovanco recommended grams, so we stopped there on our way out. But you don't remember that pasty? No, I don't. Do any of you guys? I maybe remember trying it, but like it was pretty boring to me. I was like, okay. Because <laughs> this, was, this was our first one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. pretty. when you say boring, do you mean like pretty plain flavor-wise? Yeah, and I think not what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. <laughs> and so for any of our listeners that don't know what a pasty is, Hudson, can you let them know? Yeah. The pasty was traditionally made with beef, potatoes, onions, rutabaga, and baked in pastry dough. The pasty was originally eaten by miners who took it for an easy meal while mining. They brought it with them mainly because it wasn't messy, they didn't need utensils, and it stayed warm in their lunch containers. So we tried several of them throughout the whole trip. Jack's, which is a grocery store in Manistique, a couple pasty shops in Munising, and Marquette. Tune in next week to hear the winner of the pasty off. So that's Hudson's favorite part of the sauna trail is pasties. So that's why he's telling you all about it. Well, we finally left Escanaba and drove up to Manistique, which was where our first rental was. Um, and like I said earlier, this was our first sauna as a family. So that was really exciting for us. And then, because even in the last episode, we did boys and girls. So this will be us, just our family all together, actually sounding. Um, I remember on our way up, Christopher asked me if I wanted to start all of the sauna fires. And I was like, I don't really know how to start sound of fires, but if I don't do it, then I'll never learn how to do it. So I agreed to start every sound of fire on this trip. <laughs> yeah, because I think I remember enjoying it from when we had first sounded together with that wood burning stove. So I thought oh, I'll give her the opportunity to do that. I enjoyed that process. Yeah, so he kind of like explained to me like how you start the fire, like how you have to build up a pile and have paper and start it and stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll 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 go do this. So we get up there to the rental. It's a very nice rental. It's right on the water. It's a little bit of a walk to the water, but we had access, direct access to the water. So the sauna was set a little bit away from the rental house. And um I remember they had a NEPA stove, which I didn't know anything about sauna stoves or brand names or anything like that. But I do remember starting that sauna fire and it was very easy to light and tend and get the sauna hot. And then I remember, and I don't know if Christopher told me this or if I figured it out. I don't know. You probably told me about it. But on the door, there was a knob that I could turn to adjust air intake. So then, you know, I I learned through that process that I had to have that intake open all the way at the beginning of the fire so it had lots of oxygen to heat and pull in. And then as we sounded or as the fire, we wanted the fire to kind of die down, then I would just turn that knob to close down the air intake a little bit. And so it was really easy to use. And I thought, oh, well... I can do this. This is this is easy. Yeah, and those um, NEPA stoves, they were actually f from the UP, originally started by um, the, the guy that originally started that company was Leo NEPA, and then it was sold and moved down to Lower Michigan, Okay. the company. Okay, and they're still in operation. They are still in operation. Yeah. Yep. So this rental, like I said, was in Manistique, so it was on Lake Michigan, I I remember one of the first times we sounded, it was in the evening, because I think we had traveled all day. We wanted to sound that first evening, or one of the evenings. I lit it. 
I wear glasses and I don't wear glasses in the sauna. So I couldn't really see that great. So when we were walking from the sauna to the water, it was a bit of a walk and it was through kind of like some pine trees. It was kind of grassy and I just felt very um, not comfortable because I couldn't see it was dark and I th- I don't know that we traveled that way during the day. Like, I don't know if we took that path even during the day beforehand. Yeah, I don't I don't remember walking down to the water. And I don't like using a new sauna. I learned on this trip that I don't like to use a new sauna at night when I'm having to walk to water and I can't see what's going on and I'm having to depend on my husband and my kids to be my eyes. <laughs> so what did you what did you think about this sauna, hun? I I thought it was plenty warm because we after we using our first wood burning sauna we weren't sure that we would ever like it above 190. Mm. But then we'd had a few more experiences in the one in Southwest Wisconsin. I don't know. There was no thermometer there, but that thing had to be over 200. So I did send an email to my brother Greg just kind of giving him a like a recap of what this sauna was like telling him what this sauna was like. And I said it, that it felt large because it did feel, lar- feel large, nicely built sauna. And that Lake Michigan afterwards was kind of nice and that we hit 210. <laughs> 210. And, and that it had good heat. What did, what did you guys think of this sauna? What do you guys remember? Um, I honestly don't remember going into the lake, but I do remember the walk from the sauna to the lake. And part of me was like, this is a really long walk. And part of me was like, this is so cool. <laughs> like, just like walking down to the sand, to the water. Um, but I don't remember much more than that. Yeah, I would say for the rental, I remember when we first drove in, the smell of like pine needles. That was a smell that I don't remember being like so strong before um but then like when we went to sauna it was very hot in there i did not like that at all and then we would go to the water and there was just pine needles everywhere and on my bare feet it did not feel good and then the water i remember just being really muddy and like kind of weedy um so yeah, those are about the things that I remember. Yeah, because the the beach wasn't like sandy. I think it was more grassy. And then I think that went into the water too a little bit. Like I think going into the water felt a little, like you said, muddy. Yeah, yeah and it was shallow. So you could kind of walk in. But, but as everyone has said, it was, you know, weeds and mud for the first bit and not being lake people not being used to going in the lakes yeah. it was kind of not ideal for us it, was, it felt kind of gross so i was kind of like i don't know about jumping into a lake i don't know about this this is kind of i would rather just have like water or something in the sauna well yeah and i think like i didn't get hot enough mm-hmm. and so i didn't i was still at the point where trying to appreciate the cold and the hot was difficult I don't remember being super cold outside, but it was probably a little chilly because it was November in Michigan. Yeah, I I think it was unusually warm because there wasn't snow and it was November. And I don't, I don't even know if it had snowed at all yet that season. But for us, it was just like Christopher said, we're not lake people. So going into any cold water is not fun, (laughs) whether we're warm or not. So, um, I think one thing I remember, do you guys remember this? I think this is where we played Monopoly for the first time. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. I won. I bought all the railroads and won. Yeah. Wow. I don't remember you winning. Yep. I think it was my first time winning Monopoly. And now that's still her strategy to this day is she tries to buy all the railroads. It works. (laughs) So uh, we will show you pictures and 360s um, of this sauna towards the end of the episode. So we were here for a few nights and 
I think we sounded a few times. And like I said, I really enjoyed starting the fire in that Nipa stove. It was so easy. The water was kind of meh. I think we were, felt like we could take or leave jumping into a lake. So we checked out of this rental place um, and started driving to our next place. But before we go to our next rental with our second sauna that we used, we made a stop at a smoke sauna or a savu sauna that was owned by a gentleman named John Sari. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Well, as close as we can get, Sari, uh, you know. Yeah. So, and he, I'd actually found out about the smoke sauna. Once I had heard about it, it's like this fabled smoke sauna and we wanted to use one. And this is the original and old school type of sauna. If you remember from our previous episodes where there's no metal stove and there's no chimney it's just a pile of rocks that's heated and the room fills with smoke and then once that pile of rocks is totally hot then they air out the building and then you use the sauna so i'd read about the savu sauna in the opposite of cold book which i highly recommend to everyone and that they had one in the upper peninsula of michigan and it even mentioned the name John Sari of the gentleman who owned it. And so it had been months since we'd used our previous sauna. In that time frame, I tracked him down and asked if we could come use it. He's such a sleuth. So I was super excited to, to be able to go use a Savu sauna. And so we arranged it with him and we drove to his camp. And John has actually written an article about camps. So when we say camp, that is a Finnish or a youper. Youper is someone that lives in the UP. Word for where they have maybe like a shack or a cottage out in the woods. And hunting camps are very common up there. And so John kind of shared with us what a camp was and then showed us his smoke sauna. So what was the history of the smoke sauna? Because he moved it, is that correct? Yeah, I think he had been interested in Finnish log construction and been collecting these old log buildings. And one of them he ended up making into a functional savu sauna. Some relatives from Finland came over and helped him do that. Wow. So if I remember correctly, he doesn't use it regularly, but he does light it and use it on occasion. Maybe I think he said maybe a couple times a year. Is that is that do you remember that correctly? Yeah, one or two times a year, not not super regularly. And we were excited to use it, but I don't know that we had really had that planned out and there were some health things going on. So he was generous with his time and he showed us his camp and then he also lit the Savu sauna. So we got to see that part, but we didn't actually get to use the Savu sauna. Which um, for those of you who listened to episode five, what happened, we do talk about the smoke sauna. And, you know, I, I had expressed that I couldn't wrap my head around what the Savu sauna, how it operated. And so it was really cool for me to be able to actually see, oh, this is how it works. So, um, so in the opening quote, one of the words that I said was kiwas, which is a Finnish word. And the closest translation we have is not really accurate. So in the pictures, I'll explain a little bit more what, what that actually is when we say, when I said kiwas in that opening quote, um, Kiddos, what do you guys remember? Do you guys remember anything from John Sari's smoke sauna? Um, I think, I mean, it was cool. It was a cool old building. It was fun to watch him light it. I mostly remember being bored out of my mind the whole time. <laughs> Just like walking all over for hours and I was tired. But I do remember like watching him light it. That was kind of cool and seeing like the pile of rocks and the inside of the sauna. Yeah, I was I was pretty bored as well. Um, also nervous because this was one of the first times that we had met like a stranger through this. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're in the middle of the woods, or if that's what I remember. And uh, 
this guy's light. We came here to watch him light a sauna. It's very confusing. Yeah. But it, it was cool. The buildings were... I remember there was a larger log building that he showed us or something. It was cool to see the logs and him lighting the sauna. Yeah. Boys, do you remember being bored or anything? I remember the door that was very short, and I liked it, and Dad kept almost hitting his head on the top of the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of those older saunas would have a shorter door. Um, maybe because the people were shorter or just to keep more of the heat in. So yeah. that when you open and shut the door, there's not so much heat escaping, possibly. Yeah. So we had a great time visiting with him, and we're really thankful that that he gave us that time and let us take pictures. And we also, in the area, was a town called Trenary, Michigan, which is well known for Trenary Toast. And That's we tried right. some Trenary Toasts we, that we picked up. I think we had seen it at the different grocery stores, and it always looked interesting to me. So I think when we finally bought it and tried it, I was super excited to try it. But I... When I ate it, I was like, this is not what I, what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, trinary toast is like a kind of a, a very toasty, kind of hard piece of bread that I think has cinnamon and sugar. And so it, maybe you have to know what you're doing or have it with a cup of coffee or something, but we didn't know what we were doing and we weren't used to it. So It was so hard. Do you guys remember eating that? I think I do. I remember it being hard, but I remember still liking it. And it was kind of addicting. Like, you kept going back to it, but it was so hard that it was kind of hard to eat. Yeah, I think I had maybe one bite and decided, nope, this is too too hard. I, I like the cinnamon sugar, but it was just not edible that way. You're just licking the cinnamon sugar <laughs> off the bread, basically? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to switch gears and show you our trip photos and then also the 360s of the two saunas. So we'll just go through these pictures pretty quickly. On our way up, we also stopped in Wausau, Wisconsin, which we've really enjoyed Wausau um, as we've gone through the UP a few times. We stopped in Wausau. We stopped in a park on our way there, and the kids were climbing on a sign. And Christopher always likes to climb on trees that are on top of waters. So there's Christopher going onto that tree branch, the three kids watching him, and Daniel um, is back here, and he has the look of terror on his face like he's going to start crying because Daddy's climbing onto a tree branch, and then <laughs> Daniel is made to climb over onto the branch as well. So there's little Daniel. It was a good opportunity for them to expand their horizons and do something scary. Yeah. And then this is Dr. Giovanko and his wife, and they opened up their house to us. So it was fun visiting him. And I, I didn't go to the same college, so I didn't know Dr. Giovanko, so it was nice to meet him. Yeah, he was, like I said, my favorite teacher, um, and quite a character, and also one of my hardest teachers. He would have us write five-page papers in Spanish. Um, so I didn't always get the best grades in his class, but I appreciated that he cared about us and that he had a high level of excellence in his teaching. That's always good. And this is what a pasty looks like. Um, so it's that pastry crust, and then inside is, like Hudson said, beef, potatoes. Onions, sometimes rutabaga, carrots. Okay. And then this is the smoke sauna. So this is John Sari um, just talking to us about the building outside and you can see it's november there's no snow so this is the kiwas so the closest translation we have is stove but it i think when i say stove i think of as an american not this i think of either a cooking stove or like a stove where i put the fire inside a box and it has a chimney but this, you can see there is no chimney. It's just a firebox with the metal door in front of it and then rocks all around it. Yeah, and traditionally, it wouldn't even necessarily have to have that metal door. So it could just be it could just be a pile of rocks. Sometimes they'll use brick or some metal pieces to kind of 
uh, hold everything together. And there's from the inside the sauna, you can see it with a little bit of better lighting. Um, and then there is a, a pot on top of the rocks. And traditionally, there's water and they heat up water so that they can bathe. So it's not cold water that they're bathing with. It's actually warm water. And that gets heated with the rocks. Um, you can see a broom to sweep and keep things neat and tidy in there. This is the wood pile with the sound in the background. And then you can see as the focus changes, you can see the window that's there. And I think when they actually heat it, they usually close that window. Yeah, and it's not actually a window. It's just a hatch. Yeah, that's true. It's a hatch. Yep. That they open up and they they let the smoke go out of that hatch. Once it's done heating. They might even, I don't know. Or leave it for open. Sure. They may even leave it open while they're heating it. That I'm not sure of. Sure. So you can see here Hudson standing in the doorway. So he remembers the doorway being short, and it certainly is. So, you know, he's five, and... He almost fills the doorway. <laughs> and then this is the lighting of the sauna. You can see John Sari on the ground, hands and knees, uh, lighting the firebox. Again, here's actually lighting it. And then you can see the smoke starting to come out already. And then it fills the room and comes out the windows and fills the building, comes out the door. And then... Christopher took a picture of this, and he just really liked it, so I'm going to let him talk about it. <laughs> yeah, this was a traditional, I think it was traditional Finnish carving made by someone probably in the area. It looks like a lumberjack smoking a cigar, which is what I aspire to. <laughs> and speaking of lumberjacks, there is a statue, I think it was outside of Manistique, if I remember correctly, and the kids decided to take a picture well, we probably told them to. Yeah, you made us do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll now pull up the 360s and we'll talk about the inside of the saunas. So this is the 360 of the sauna that we used in Manistique and you can see the Nipa stove there. And then as we turn around, you can see, you can barely see the water there through the pine trees. But that's the path to the water. So you can see it's pretty woody, pretty grassy. Um, and then there's a nice wood pile there off to the left. So going in, you go first. There's a hallway. And, and the, the stove was heated from the outside. It was an exterior feed, or in this case, from the hallway. Which was kind of nice because I didn't have to like... It wasn't super hot then when I went to go feed the stove. It was from the outside. So, And then we're going to go inside the sauna here. So this is the hot room, and you can see the stove there. They did have some um, under this bench lighting, which was kind of nice and soft and not too too bright. But the bench is pretty pretty good height. I don't remember that window at the top. Um, I don't think it's a window. It's just oh. another hatch to when you're done with the sauna to to air it out. Oh, so is that a screen? Was there a screen there then? Maybe. I'm not sure. Hmm. It, there may not be a screen because you probably didn't keep it open for super long and you weren't in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember that. I think I had to, I think I did message them and ask them how to do that because, you know, these first few saunas we used, we didn't know what we were doing at all. What do you guys think? Any thoughts? I don't, I remember it being smaller, but it actually had like the top bench there. Yeah, I thought it was smaller. Yeah, it fit our family pretty well. And I do remember these first few years after getting into the sauna, the most common place for the boys while we were using the sauna was right Right here. <laughs> right by the door. <laughs> right down by the door, being like, it's hot in here. It's hot. Can we go out? <laughs> Did we, we used like water in here, right? Probably a little bit. Yeah, with that bucket there, probably. But early on, I don't know. I don't know how much we really knew what we were doing in the sauna. So 
I'm not sure we made tons of steam or used tons of water to rinse or wash in the sauna. Okay. Because I'm trying to remember if it was this sauna that we like poured water on our heads for the first time or something in the sauna. It could be to to cool you guys off. We might have also done some of that in the previous one. Okay. So that's the one in Manistique. So this one is the one is the smoke sauna. Yeah. So this is outside of the smoke sauna. There's no changing room. Just goes right into the building and let me pan around here so you can see the forest and he was so gracious he walked around he walked us around his property for a bit and walked us down to a creek that he had and it was just very nice he he was very generous so the inside is so interesting and so unlike any other sauna i'd been in before you can see the dark walls that's not paint that's actually from the smoke right Yep. So as they heat it and it fills with smoke, that's actually um, residual from heating it. And then you can see the kiwas there with the, and I think the ones that I've seen, like pictures I've seen of ones in Finland, like the pile is just not just on top, but all around too. There's just, it's just surrounded with rocks. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, rustic. It's not like the cedar-lined saunas that we think of, the hotel and gym ones. There's, It's just wood and up the stairs, and you can see there. You're sitting up high enough where I think your feet is above the kiwas. It's hard to tell that proportion. Yeah. this Looking at like this, it makes me wish that we would have used it or even you know maybe not when i was so little because like the bench height looks really good and how far away was it from like what could you go to the creek from there or was it not close at all okay but it was pretty far okay mm-hmm. but yeah and okay. this setup is fairly common even in non-smoke saunas in finnish saunas i can usually tell was it a finnish person that built the sauna or a non-finished person by if they have like the set of stairs and then the guard rails or the rail to put your feet up and relax your feet that's a very traditional finish bench design the only thing that i would if i was building this savu sauna for myself is i might flatten off the ceiling a bit to try and keep some of the heat and steam down by where the sauna bathers are. But it's probably not too much going up there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we did, you know, I think there are a few saunas that we have seen um, since then that have, like, cut off the roof so it's not at an apex so that the heat does stay um, kind of lower in the building. Um, so that is the 360s of our first experience with a smoke sauna even though we didn't get to use it we did get to see it we get to did get to see it light and and kind of get an idea of how that works yeah and if you want to go turn around and look at these pictures and see something that maybe we went over a little quickly we'll have links to these 360 degree photos on our website or on our locals page um, which is the sauna trail.locals.com so you can Take a look at your own leisure and steal some of these build ideas from from them. We're going to wrap it up for today, but join us next week for part two of our UP trip. We'll share our thoughts and experience with the second sauna we used in all our adventures in the Keweenaw Peninsula. If you haven't yet, join our locals community and say hi. It's free to sign up. You'll get regular updates from us. And if you'd like to support this podcast, Locals has that option as well. The address is thesoundatrail.locals.com. We appreciate all of our supporters and fellow sound hounds. Our podcast can be found on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and other streaming platforms, as well as our website, thesoundatrail.com. New episodes release every Saturday, which is the traditional Finnish day for sauna, also called sauna paiva. We hope to see you on the sauna trail. <laughs>